Hello and welcome wherever you are. Today we are going to look at the preparation of insoluble salts and we are going to use a method known as double decomposition. It's the common way we prepare our insoluble salts. Basically double decomposition means breaking down two things. That's why we are saying double decomposition. However, this is going to involve precipitation of a salt and because of that, sometimes this kind of preparation is known as precipitation. So we can prepare insoluble salts, we can either save through double decomposition or by precipitation method. And in this method, we are going to use solutions of two soluble salts. We shall mix them together. And in this case, we shall have metallic ion exchange, as we are going to see, together with acid radical exchange. And the result that the required insoluble salt will be precipitated and the other salt will remain in aqueous state. So we are going to get two salts, as we are going to see. And these salts must be soluble in water. And when we mix the two, one of them that will be formed will be insoluble and will have to precipitate out. Let's have a look at the preparation of lead sulfate. Lead sulfate is a salt that is insoluble in water. We shall basically be using water as our main solvent in this case. How do we know lead sulfate is insoluble? Obviously, first it could be from experience, then second from solub solubility books. There are some books at least, there is some literature that can somehow document and tell you salt X is soluble, salt Y is insoluble. So lead sulfate is among the insoluble salts. And how can we prepare lead sulfate? We can get two salts, say lead nitrate and sodium sulfate. Both of these are soluble in water. That's why in our equations, you will see them in aqueous form. We write them as aqueous lead nitrate and lead and sodium sulfate. They are both soluble salts. So we dissolve them in water as the previous slide said. We shall basically mix soluble salts, this and that. However, when you look at these salts in water, these salts tend to produce some ions. Our lead nitrate will produce lead ions and the nitrate ions. Together with our sodium sulfate will also produce the sodium ions in solution and the sulfate ions. So what happens is that these ions interact in that solution. For example, if this is our solution and we are having all these four in this solution after mixing them together, we bring our sodium sulfate and then we mix it together with our lead nitrate. So in solution, we shall be having positive and negative radicals. So what happens is that all the ions, what happens is that positive and negative will have to attract one another. So, whenever our lead ions interact with the sulfate ions, fortunately the salt produced will be a solid. Lead sulfate is insoluble in water. So at this point we shall start seeing a white precipitate coming out. We shall start seeing lead sulfate precipitating out. So, we shall start seeing some solid particles being formed some solid particles and as such our lead sulfate will precipitate out over the course these ions will come out of the solution and then shall be left with only the nitrate the nitrate and the sodium ions so obviously they will also pair up because opposite charges will attract so we shall have sodium and nitrate ion in the solution so in the due process, our lead sulfate, which is a solid, will become a precipitate or it will come out of solution and we can filter off and then dry it and we shall have prepared our lead sulfate. So the trick is simple, get two salts containing the ions whose salt you are trying to prepare and then mix them together. So now let's look at the general steps we could follow to prepare a similar salt. So general steps of preparing insoluble salts. One, we shall get a mixture of a soluble salt containing the metallic ion. In the previous case, it was our lead ion. 
of the required salt with any other soluble salt containing the appropriate acid radical. And that previous case it was the sulfate radical. And the precipitate of lead sulfate will form. So a mixture of a solution of soluble salt. Our mixture, remember, we had our lead, I think lead nitrate, together with our sodium sulfate. This was our mixture. So we produced our lead sulfate. Then step two, filter the precipitates. Now you will have a solution containing the precipitate in solid form, our sodium, our lead sulfate, together with our sodium nitrate. We shall have our sodium nitrate left behind. However, we shall have our lead sulfate as the solid. So obviously to separate a solid from a liquid, we have to filter out. We shall just get our filter paper and put it in a filter funnel and then we shall filter it out. So that means our precipitate will, will be the residue. It will not go through the filter paper. So we filter the precipitates as our second step. Then we shall wash the precipitate or the residue in this case with distilled water so that we can dissolve any soluble impurities. Yes, as we are filtering, obviously we could be having some soluble impurities that we may remain behind with the precipitate or the residue. So somehow to improve the purity of our our salt, we shall need to wash it with distilled water so that that impurity at least will dissolve more and then it will be washed away. And then lastly, we shall dry using a filter paper or some little sunlight. So you just place our residue, the white solid particles or crystals onto our filter paper. Over time, the filter paper will at least absorb some of the liquid present and then we shall be left with our dry precipitate. That's how we can prepare any soluble, any insoluble salt as long as you can identify two soluble salts, one containing the metallic radical and the other containing the acid radical. So how do we, how can we be able to do so by knowing which salts are soluble and which salts are insoluble? Usually when we are looking at salts, we look at five different types, ammonium salts, nitrates, chlorides, sulfates, and carbonates. This table here, you can feel free to pause it and check out which salts are insoluble on the right hand side of this table. So all nitrates are soluble, so you will not expect insoluble nitrates. All group 1 and ammonium salts are also soluble, so you will not find insoluble ammonium salts. So in soluble salts, we have our lead 2 chloride, at least. We have our silver chloride under the chlorides. Also, lead 2 chloride, it is slightly soluble on warming. We have our lead sulfate, the one we have just looked at. We have barium sulfate. We have calcium sulfate, which is also slightly soluble. And all other carbonates which are not group 1 or ammonium carbonates are insoluble. Name it, for example, if you look at copper 2 carbonate, if you look at lead carbonate, these are all insoluble. So feel free to pause this video and check out which ones are insoluble so that in case you are asked to prepare, maybe to prepare a salt of magnesium carbonate, you should be able to tell that this carbonate will actually be insoluble. How? practice makes perfect there's no way of telling just like you will know sugar dissolves in water while sand does not it's either from experience or from reputation that's all i had for you today thanks for watching stay safe